So for us, it's not necessarily clothing the naked. It is helping those whose clothes are not what they ought to be, especially in winter, right? Think about winter. And all you have is a thin shirt and a light jacket and you're outside. Wouldn't be fun. Well, I'm going to invite Tom Thorson up because he's going to talk about a program that he and many other people in this church have been involved in that helps to do something about that. And if, and if you guys, you can go back and sit with your folks if you would like. Tom, come on up. I'm going to put this over here. So, Tom, tell us about the program um, the that you're door. the open door, and you have to hold the mic real close for people to hear. Well, I may be the least qualified to speak on the subject. Uh, we have many, many uh, people, as John said, at this church who have volunteered time and talent to assist those that we were talking about here this morning in this sermon. Uh, homeless, the folks without much money. That describes the guests of the Open Door program. It's located down in Detroit, right in the heart of Detroit, in the Fort Street Presbyterian Church, where that program was started over 50 years ago. The church has but 140 members. The demographics, as you know, have changed dramatically through the years in Detroit. They must rely heavily on the business community, individuals, and churches to run that program. They have been running it for 50 plus years thanks to the generosity of people like you who have donated time, talent, resources, gently used clothing. The typical week at the open door, on Tuesdays they have what they call the career closet. At the career closet they offer clothing which might be appropriate for a job interview or perhaps for employment. On Wednesday, they have small group meetings. At the small group meeting, it has always begun with prayer. They have fellowship, companionship. They share. They network together. There's a little counseling that goes on once in a while and certainly some referrals to social services. Thursday is the big day. As I mentioned, or if I didn't mention, they serve 1,000 guests each month. There's a lot of room at that church and a lot of heart. They start the, the day off with a hot meal nourishing meal, which is done by scratch in the kitchen there. Again, think of this now, volunteers. There's one executive director paid full-time. I should say paid part-time for full-time work. There are shower facilities there. There's the opportunity to meet with other agencies that are invited in. It's an opportunity for them to provide things like ID cards so that if they're parents, they can see their children in the school because you have to have a picture ID and most of these folks do not have licenses. In order to pick up a prescription drug, they need this municipal ID. A new initiative that's been taken on this year by Open Door in partnership with, some of you may have heard of, the greening of Detroit. They planted a thousand trees around Detroit. Together, they're 
trying to improve the eating habits of the low-income population downtown. As you can imagine, there's a lot of starches. What they do is they're teaching them to plant, nurture, and harvest fresh vegetables and herbs. And then in the kitchens, they're conducting healthy cooking lessons. Each one of these sessions costs about $180, and to support that, it takes donations. So tell us about, um, do you have a story about someone who has been changed by Fort Street Open Door? Yeah. <clears throat> Open Door provides a beacon of hope. It's perhaps one of its greatest gifts. David started coming to the Open Door eight months ago, homeless, without a job. Today, thanks to intervention at the Open Door, they've got him assigned a caseworker. They got him a part-time job, helped him fill out his application and get accepted, Section 8 housing. He's in his own apartment today. He's getting his life squared away, working part-time at the Lafayette Greens Garden. Catherine. Catherine was addicted to crack cocaine, homeless, on the streets. She frequented the open door, was put in touch with professionals, she received some help. She had a lot of courage, a lot of grit, as a lot of Detroiters do. And today she's sober. She's a student at the Wayne County Community College. So what could folks here do to help? Uh, could they donate clothes, time, money? What would, what would help? All of the above. <laughs> If you'd like to volunteer, they do have a website. You could go on that. Uh, you could talk to me. You could talk to several members in this congregation. I just want to mention a few. I was introduced to the Fort Street Open Door program many years ago by Tom Kirchhofer and Ross Stunts, who worked in the clothing department. Ken Tompkins, he works and volunteers sometimes in the clothing department. And you might find me there once in a while. Virginia Mottershaw is there every Tuesday and every Thursday helping out. Oh, they're just, I'm forgetting to mention many, but this has been a generous, generous congregation. Hopefully it'll continue to be so. They need gently used clothing. Right now, women don't take offense, but they need more men's clothing and shoes and belts. So if you have these items, they could be greatly appreciated. And I'll thank you for all of the folks, the guests at the Open Door program. Thanks, Tom. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that we have been given so very much. Help us to be ever mindful of, of our fortune, our blessing, and help us to bless others by offering up, whether it's through Fort Street or Welcome In or the Well Project in Kenya, whatever it is. Help us to be your hands, your arms, your feet, your love to those around us. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen.